Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today with problem number 503 or next greater element part two. This is, a, I believe it's a three part problem. We're only gonna be looking at the second part today. Uh, the question is being asked by Amazon. Predominantly though, Bloomberg, Apple, and Facebook have all picked it up at least a bit. And the problem goes as follows. We are, we're given a circular array and we need to print the next greater number for every element. For those of you unfamiliar, a it, it, the circular array is only, it's an abstract idea. So in memory, it exists just like an array would, but we say that the next element of the final element is, be, is gonna be the first element in the array. Meaning, if I'm looking at this input here, one, two, one, we start at one, we go to two, we go to one, and then after we kind of loop back around to the, to the first entry, the zero entry. Uh, the question says that the, the next greater number of a number x is the first greater number uh, to its traversing order in the array, which means you could search circularly to find its next greater number. If it doesn't exist, I will put negative one for this number. And okay, so a bit of a mouthful, but if, if actually I don't, I don't know why I zoomed out, if I, I've got an input of one, two, one, when I'm at the one, I realize that my next greater number is two. And so that's what I'll, I'll put here. Uh, two never has a greater number, so we'll have to output negative one there. And then for this one, there are no numbers that come after it sequentially in the array. But again, if we were to loop around and, and acknowledge the fact that it's a circular array, we do eventually hit the two and, and that's why we're going to output a two here. We'll walk through an example that might make it a bit more intuitive. And I've, I've picked some numbers that they used in, in a solution here. So we'll, we'll do a walk through that and hopefully make it clear. So this problem on first glance, it does have a pretty trivial solution, which is the, the n squared solution. And what that one would say is basically uh, any element let me, let me look at this element and then let me walk through the entire array and then walk through it from the start until I get to that, that array. So from the n elements, we would do n minus one steps to check every single number and see kind of the first time we, we find a bigger number, we would pop that into our result. So we would do that n times, um, n minus one steps for n elements would, would reduce to n squared really. Um, unfortunately, like usual, that brute force solution, maybe it's a good place to start, but it won't get you very far in terms of helping you proceed through the interview. And so we're, we're gonna look at a slightly more clever way to, to do this. What we what we can notice, whoops, I didn't mean to click solution, I meant to go here. I'm sorry. Uh, so what we wanna think about is the following. If we're looking at, at some given element, let's say I start walking through this array. So I'm, I'm right over here. I don't know what is, I don't know what's in front of me, okay? I do know or sorry, I do know what's behind me, but I don't know what is, is going to be in front of me. So if I've got, I've got this three here, eventually, so in this case, I'd, I'd kind of come across, across the eight and I have to find a way to say, okay, well, eight seems to be the next biggest number that I just, I came across or, or the first one that's bigger than three. So I want to go, go here and, and output, maybe I'll create a result array here. And, and I want to put an eight here. Okay, fine. I, I do something similar here from the eight and I, I try to move move onwards. Eventually we're gonna find that we never actually satisfy this one. We're gonna end up printing out a, a negative one here. But let's think about, about something like, like this. So I've got, I'm at the four. I'm, I'm, I'm almost, what I'm, I'm trying to do here is, is do a linear walk. I'm trying to walk through logically without giving the answer away just right off the bat. But if I'm, imagine we're doing one walk through one step at a time. So my first step was at the three. I, I acknowledge and say, okay, it's fine. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave almost like an, an empty uh, space in a result array. Maybe I can initialize the array and just and fill it in as we as we need to as we go. So I'm, I'm looking at this three and okay, we're at the first element. I can't do anything. Um, fine. I get to the eight and I realize, okay, well, what were what were the elements behind me that that needed a number and. Um, well, three was there, and since eight is bigger than three, I can acknowledge the fact that, that that's the case, and I'm, I'm going to put this eight in here, as in eight is the next greater number after we see three. We're at the eight, that's okay. I come to the four. The only number I've seen before was eight. Four is not bigger than eight, so that doesn't help me, right? I, I can't really fill anything in here, okay? I'm at the one. Now I look back, and, and you know, one is, it's not greater than four, it's not greater than eight. And I'm doing a couple of checks here, but start thinking, so as I'm, as I'm kind of saying this, if I'm, if I'm checking what's behind me, okay? In this case, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that it would almost take two steps to look behind, but what data structure can we use to check uh, briefly or, or to check very quickly uh, whether or not we would have 
any items that are behind us, which we haven't filled in yet, right? Which we haven't found a creator number to yet. And so think about that while we walk through this, because that's going to be the key to answering this question. So the one doesn't help me here much. I get the two and I realize that, well, two is greater than one. So the first number that's greater than one is, is going to be the two. Okay. Now I look back around here. What we can do is we're going to be able to solve this problem in linear time. So I've done one walkthrough and I've, I've found two of my answers here. Uh, this doesn't imply that the rest of them don't have solutions, but we're not sure yet. We've only done one walkthrough. Is there any way for me to store the information of this walkthrough as I want, such that I can easily access and say to myself, if I was to do one more walkthrough, which would still be linear time, if I was to sit at this three, how could I check whether three is larger than any number that, that preceded it, given that we're, we're in this circular shape here? So if I, if I kind of come full circle, the three is greater than the two. So really what I, I do want is I do want to have a, a three here because I want to somehow have kept track to say, well, the last number that I saw was two. And you know, if I, I compare the three to that two and I realize, okay, three is, three is bigger. And so we, we need to acknowledge that here, okay? We get back to the eight again. This isn't going to help us much. Um, so I'm, I'm at the eight, then I get to the four. I, I keep walking through this way. Once I get to the four, I realize, okay, well, there was a point at which before I got here, if we were to kind of step back, so we were here, we were here, and then we, we did a full step here, there was a point where there was an eight, okay? And that eight is greater than the four, so there surely there must be, the eight must go here. And again, we'll, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna keep track of that. But really at the end of the day, when I finish my second walk, and I notice these results are filled, I'm done. I've actually solved this, and since this one is empty, we'll, we'll fill it with the negative one here. And so this is actually the, the final answer that we're going to output. Now, the trick to how we're actually going to do this is, is actually be going, is, is going to be uh, using a stack. And I'll do a quick walkthrough here with the stack to show you why, why the stack is going to be convenient. I'm going to move my big head down here a bit. I can't make this any smaller, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would. I promise I'm not egotistical. I'm like trying to show you too much of my face. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a stack here. And in the stack, I'm going to keep indices, okay? I'm going to, so I'm going to keep uh, index. And what I'm going to do is that every single step of the way, I'm going to append the index of the item that I'm on onto the stack. When I get to the, my next number, I'm going to pop off everything before it that is smaller than the number that I'm on right now. So watch this. I'm going to start here. I'm going to pop on the, or sorry, maybe I should use different verbiage. I'm going to append three. Really, I'm going to append its index, which is zero. And maybe I'll keep the value, so the values of three. I get to the eight here. So I compare eight to the value of the top item on the stack here, which is three. Three exists at index zero. Since eight is greater than three, at index zero, I'm going to set result index zero to be eight. Okay? I'll pop this off because I've filled it. I'm now going to append my latest value, which is eight. Okay? I get to my next number, which is four. I check my items at the top of my stack. Is four greater than the top of my stack? No, it's not. So I'm just going to go ahead and append my index. And again, the value here, I'm just keeping so, so we can visually see it. Same thing here with the one, same thing. It is not greater than the top of the stack here. So I'm going to append the index and this is the value. Then I get here. I get to, I'm looking at a two and I compare that to the top of my stack. I notice that this is greater than the value at the top of my stack. The value at the top of the stack is one, which is at index three. So I'm gonna set the result at index three to be my number two, because two is greater than this one. I'm now going to pop this off, okay? Bye bye, Charlie. So that's gone. I can now keep comparing it to the items below and I can ask myself, is two greater than the four? Let's say this four was a zero. Just let's entertain it for a second. If this four was a zero. I would also put a two right here because two is greater than zero. And actually, I, I take that back. I would have, maybe this, I would have filled it with the one here, but maybe imagine the four was a 1.5. I know we're doing integers, but imagine it was a 1.5. Since two is greater than, than this here, I would also then be filling in a two here and I would have popped that off the stack as well. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be looking at the top number of the stack and popping all of the numbers off that are smaller than the one I'm looking at. For each of the indices we're popping off, I'm going to update it with the current number that we're on. Because by definition of, of the stack, if we had a number that was already greater than the item on the stack, we would have popped that off. Since we haven't popped it off, it must be that the number that I'm looking at now is greater than what we're comparing to on the stack. Or rather, if it is greater, it must be the first one that is that is greater. And now that we did that, we, we pop this one on, so we've or we append it. 
values too. Um, I come here to the three. This doesn't help us. I'm going to append the three. So I'll make sure that I haven't, I haven't made any mistakes here. Um, for before I append the three, excuse me, this was my first walkthrough. Now I'm starting my second walkthrough. I now look at my three here and I say, is my value here greater than what's at the top of my stack? Yes, it is. So I need to go to index four right over here and put the value three because three is really, it's the first number that appears that's greater than this two. I pop this off and my three goes on. Okay, my three goes on. We get to the eight, we're gonna do the same exercise. So we're gonna you know, refill this with the, with the eight again. It's a bit redundant, but we're, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm gonna put the eight on here. And I get to the eight, I notice that it's not greater than anything here. This is gonna remain at a negative one. We don't have any items greater than eight. Finally, I get to the four, okay? And I think that in my, kind of in my, my walk through here, I've, I've missed a step here in, in filling this one in, but what we, what we would do here, oh, no, I'm sorry. Before we do this, this is what I missed. Before we add this eight on here, we check the top of the stack. This is the top of the stack right now. My drawing is getting a bit messy. Since that's the top of the stack, and eight is bigger than four, we're going to go to index two and fill it in with an eight. And that's how we, we end up with this result. This is still blank here. I've left it only for illustrative purposes. When I actually create this, this result array, I'm gonna fill it all with negative ones just right off the bat. So our default answer is negative one. And then we're gonna update answers as we find them accordingly. So I hope that explanation made sense. I I think that the solution here is, is a bit tricky. I, I, I don't think it's obvious. I think. If it's hard to follow along, try it for yourself. So when I had, I, the reason I keep looking down is I actually, I, I kind of did the, the walk through here myself manually and, and drew it out. And it took me a couple of tries to actually get there at the end. Um, so I, I'd urge you to, to write this one up by hand if it doesn't make any sense. The logic is sound, I promise. And the court is out, the court, the code is going to be very short. So why don't we dive into it? Let's, let's have a look at, at what we need to do. And then we'll, we'll, we'll submit and make sure we're, we're all good. So uh, typically, I would say we we start with some error checking, but the way we're going to build this out is it'll it'll take care of the error checking for us. Um, the only real error checking I can think of is if we got a, a blank array. Um, but again, the, the code we're going to write will take that into account anyway, so I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. Uh, then we're going to need to do, we'll have to do one walkthrough, and then we'll have to do a second walkthrough. So why don't we, why don't we start by doing this? We said we're definitely going to need a stack. We're going to need some result array. And at the end of the cell, we're going to have to return the result. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing my first walkthrough through the nums array. And since I'm going to be using both the index and the, and the value, then I'm going to do like an enumerate walkthrough through this. So I'll say for, for index i and for num, oops, in enumerate nums, we're going to do the following. We said that when we're looking at a number, we want to compare that number to what's at the top of the stack. Okay. And I, I'm going to update this result in a second. I, just, I missed something. But we want to compare the number we're at to what's at the top of the stack. So I'm going to say while, first off, while there is a stack, and while num is greater than whatever's at the, the top of the stack. And so what's at the top of the stack, remember, is going to be an index. So I'm interested in, in what that index represents in the nums array. So that's what I'm going to say while uh, the number we're looking at is greater than the, the, the value at the index at the top of the stack. Uh, we are going to say, if that's the case, we want to pop that item off the stack and update that index. So we're going to go to result, and the index is going to be at, at stack.pop, and that's going to equal num. So in this case, when we had, you know, when, when we had zero on the stack here at the beginning, and then we were looking at this number here, the eight, we said since eight is greater than three, we're going to update our result at index zero, so this, when we pop it off, we get the index zero. And the value we're going to put there is the number we're currently looking at, which would be the eight or the num here. Um, you'll notice that this may actually give us an error because I haven't created uh, any, any slots in here yet. And so by default, I'm going to use a list comprehension here. And, and I'm going to say we're going to put the value negative one for, uh, for every value in the length of them. So just some underscore um, in range in the length of nums. Or really, I'll just say for this in nums. Okay. So uh, for every single number that we have in here, I'm just gonna put in a negative one and we'll have a, a placeholder in the results. Finally, when we've done this, we want to say the following. We want to append the index that we're on right now onto the stack. So I'll say stack.append uh, index. And that's gonna be our first walkthrough. 
Now, since the first and second walkthrough are actually identical, what I can do is just, oops, what I can do is just wrap all of this in its own for loop. And I can just say for, uh, for some underscore in range two, because we want to do this twice, walk through this whole process two times. Um, you could have copy pasted this and, and just have it ran twice. It, it doesn't matter. I, just, I chose to do it this way. Um, and don't be confused here. This is still a linear solution, even though we have a nested for loop situation, because this is just saying, repeat this linear operation twice, not repeat it n times. So this is going to be n steps and we're going to do it twice. So 2n, which, which simplifies down to O of n. And I'm, I'm going to run it here and just make sure I didn't make any mistakes. I'll submit it and make sure we're all good. And there we go. So this was the, the linear time and also linear space solution to this problem. It would be linear space because we have this stack, which could Hypothetically, if we had all decreasing numbers, we have five, four, three, two, one, we would keep adding items onto the stack and never actually popping anything off until we do that second round, second walkthrough. So I hope this helped. I hope you guys found it. I hope you found it useful. Again, this was the, the next greater element uh, problem 503. It's the second one in the series. I, I don't have videos up yet for, for one and three, but I, I might get around to those at some point. Um, if you liked it, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. Any questions, drop them down below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.